I grew up in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and I'd go to the Carnegie Library uh, in, in the Oakland area, and for me it was a refuge. It's where I could go and uh, just lose myself in a book and uh, you know, sometimes find a, a sense of community that I wasn't really finding at school. And so, uh, I, in many ways, I think that library saved my life. Well, you know, when I, we first moved to what's now my home, uh, Nantucket Island, uh, 25 years ago, our kids were one and four, and I was a stay-at-home dad. And I was new to the area, looking for things to do with the children. And we stumbled upon the Nantucket Athenaeum, which is a wonderful historic building that is also the public library. And they had a children's section down in the basement. And that became where we just hang out every afternoon. And I got to know the librarian, the staff. Uh, a few years later, I was asked to come on the board. And that institution, more than uh, any other I've ever been associated with, helped me find, make a home uh, in a very special place. And also taught, gave me the, the, the stuff, the documents, to eventually become a historian. And because that's where my research began on the history of Nantucket, which eventually led to my first history book. So the Nantucket Athenaeum for me is really uh, where it all began as, as a, in a sense, a father and as a writer. Well, and then it continues. I mean, the, the reference librarian, Sharon, uh, at the um, library 15 years ago when I was first beginning in the heart of the sea was my lifeline to other places. And so, you know, uh, interlibrary loan was, you know, how I was able to write this book on an island 30 miles out to sea. And so, yeah, it was, this, it's, it's obviously uh, absolutely critical to, to all aspects of who I am. I have to say the entire staff at the Nantucket, this, uh, Nantucket Athenaeum, past and present, uh, uh, are, are just, uh, they're, they're fundamental community members, and without them, uh, Nantucket, particularly in the off-season, uh, would not have a, a, a central part, really. You know, it's what keeps it, us all going. So, uh, libraries are vital. They're always underfunded and underappreciated in terms of what it costs and what is required to maintain it. And particularly for the Athenaeum, which is a historical building, it's not just a library, it's, it's a part of the fabric of the community. Library budget cuts are, are, are just so misguided because libraries in bad economic times are, are, the, are the ultimate refuge for people. And to, to cut staff as they become more and more important and relevant to a, a, a community and a society is, is just senseless. Politicians and community members need to know the importance that these institutions have and you just cannot cut them because they're already to the point. I think, you know, the, this whole notion of banning a book is so misguided because the, the minute it's banned, it's important uh, because people wonder uh, why. And, uh, you know, the whole reason this country is here uh, is, is because we're supposedly keeping those gates open. And uh, I mean, we all have choice and we all have, uh, you know, the ability to make those kinds of decisions. And, and to, to make those decisions for us, uh, I think, is, is misguided. And, and personally, being a contrarian, you know, if, if, it's, if I'm told I'm not supposed to read it, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Well, I um, just have a new book coming out, Why Read Moby Dick, and that's coming out in October. I'm really excited. It's, 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 it's a, you know, I'm known as a historian, but this is as much a work of, of liter literary criticism, and it's a very personal book, because it's, for me it's kind of a personal Bible, so uh, that's fun. But what I'm now doing uh, research-wise is a book about Boston and the American Revolution, and so that's, that's sort of what I'm in the middle of now, and, and really enjoying the research and going to the spots. And, hopefully start writing soon.